survive peer pressure if you have a plan, like Nando said. If we had known then what we know now, none of that stuff would have happened. There are some strategies that can help. First of all, learn to recognize peer pressure. Second, make sure you listen to your inner voice. You know, that voice inside your head that tells you when something isn't right. Third, it can really help to talk to someone outside the group. Someone else's input can make a difference and help you see what's really going on. The fourth strategy is to imagine your parents can see you. How would they feel if they could see what you're doing and how would you feel if they knew? The fifth strategy is to ask yourself, is it worth the risk? Think about what could happen. Peers and friends are a really big deal. They help you out when you need help. They're there for you, right? But sometimes they can also be a source of trouble. That's why I tell my students, keep your antenna up. To survive peer pressure, you need to recognize it for what it is. I just didn't get the concept at first. The whole peer pressure thing just seemed so fake. Then, something happened that changed my thinking. I'm afraid I'm gonna fail that test on Friday. I have to take it Thursday. Oh right, you're taking it early. You got that uh, chess tournament thing. If I fail this test on Friday, I'm not gonna be able to play on the team. And that means we'll lose. Hate to agree with him, but his jump shot's been hot lately. Start studying, man. Listen to the math brain. I study. I study. Is that the best you can do for a friend? Why don't you really help him out? How? You're taking the test Thursday. Give him a call Thursday night and give him some pointers. No way, man. What if I get caught? You can just tell me what to study for. And maybe one or two problems on the test. Did you get an answer for number 10? Yeah, look. If I fail this test, we won't beat Penn Hills next week. And? You could help me out, like Ryan said. What if we get caught? We won't. Even if Mr. Carson thinks I cheated. He can beg all he wants, I won't tell. I know, but he could find out some other way. How? Listen, it's not like I didn't study. It's just really hard for me. And if you ever need my help for anything, you know I'm there. That really got to me, because I knew if I ever needed his help, he'd be there. You know what I'm saying? That's called a manipulation. Trying to make you feel guilty for not going along with something. Check it for what it is, peer pressure. When you recognize manipulation as peer pressure, you've won half the battle. Thanks, Justin. How'd you do? It was hard. Yeah, I'm sure you did pretty well. Listen, before you go, there's something I want you to sign. Sign? It's a statement that you promised not to discuss this test with anyone. I am grateful for the privilege of taking this test early, and I am aware of the trust this implies. As a person of honor and integrity, I promise not to discuss this test with anyone. Signing this meant I couldn't talk to Reno about the test or else I'd feel like a loser. Hello? Was it hard? Yeah. Were there a lot of algebraic equations? Yeah. Help me out, man. 
just this once. I'll never ask you again. I caved in and started telling him stuff. But Mr. C figured it out pretty fast when he saw Reno's test. He knows we're friends and he knew Reno couldn't have done it without help. When Mr. C asked me, I couldn't look him in the face and lie. Everyone knows we cheated. We both got an F for the test, and I'm off the team. I felt bad about what I made Justin do, too. I know it brought him down. If they didn't get caught, it wouldn't have been a big deal, would it? You gotta help a friend when they need it. What do you think would have happened if Justin had recognized the manipulation, the peer pressure? What if he had listened to his inner voice or talked to someone outside the group? If he had thought, what if my parents could see me now? Or asked himself, is it worth the risk? Think about it. Let's face it. What your friends think and the things they say and do influence you. When you agree with them, everything is cool. But what about when you don't agree? What about when they expect you to go along with something that doesn't seem right to you? I'm not saying my friends are perfect, but hey, they're my friends, and they don't ever say, do this or do that. They don't really have to. We usually want the same things. <laughs> oh, hey, Katie. Hey. I like that shirt. Is it new? Yeah, I got it last weekend at the mall. Can I borrow it? Um, I don't know. I mean, this is the first time I wore it. Please. I just want to see if I like it. Well, okay. Thanks. Bring it in tomorrow? <laughs> yeah. Nikki was always doing something like that to Katie. At first, I didn't think too much about it because Katie didn't seem to mind. But deep down, I felt funny about it. Katie's best friend had moved, and she was trying to make friends with us, I guess. The shirt looks good on you. Yeah, I think so too. Actually, I was thinking, can I buy it from you? Uh, I don't think so, Nikki. I really like it too. I'll pay extra. All oh, right, if it means that much to you. I'll bring the money in on Friday. It was hard to watch. My inner voice was telling me to tell Nikki to cut it out. But I didn't listen to it. Everyone has an inner voice, and it's very important. It will tell you when something isn't right. But Emily didn't listen to hers. Nikki, Nikki. Nikki, do you have the money you owe me for the shirt? Oh, Katie. I'm sorry. I forgot. I can bring it in next week. I, I was going to get myself another one. By next week, they might not have it anymore. I'm really sorry. I just forgot. Weeks passed, and Nikki didn't pay Katie the money. Maya and I didn't think it was right, but we didn't know what to do. This is where you might want to try that third strategy. Take time out and talk to someone outside the group. Why don't you and Maya just tell Nikki to stop being so mean? Yeah, I guess. Like, don't you feel sorry for Katie? Her best friend moves, and she's just trying to make some new friends. It's wrong to treat her like that. I know. I was thinking I should say something, but what if she gets mad? If Nikki gets mad, she'll get over it. If you and Maya do it together, she'll get the message. Nikki's your friend. She'll listen to you. Peer pressure can exist without anything actually being said. When there's something going on in your group that you don't like, it can be hard to know what to do. Taking time out and talking to someone outside the group gives you a chance to see things more clearly and will often support your inner voice. Yeah, I know some history. Hey! Hey, Hi. Um, 
Maya and I want you to stop being so mean to Katie. We don't feel right about it. It's just a joke. <laughs> it's not funny anymore. You need to pay her for the shirt. Oh, all right. I didn't know it was such a big deal. I decided I didn't want to buy it anyway. Oh, okay. When I see Katie around school, I always wish we had stood up for her sooner. If I had paid attention to my inner voice, things might have been different. Nikki needed to hear it too. And it was such a relief when she stopped being mean like that. But by then it was too late for all of us to be friends. It had gone too far. If Emily had known how to recognize peer pressure, or had imagined her parents could see her, what might have happened instead? If you can recognize it up front, when it's happening, you've won half the battle. So remember those five strategies for dealing with peer pressure. One, recognize peer pressure. Recognize manipulation. Keep your antenna up. Two, consider the effect the group is having on you and listen to your inner voice. It's almost never wrong. Three, take time out and talk to someone outside the group. Get a clearer picture of what's going on. Four, imagine your parents can see you. Think about what they would say or do if they knew. Five, ask yourself, is it worth the risk? Think it through. Consider the possible consequences. <laughs>